we know I've been pimping the Cincinnati Bengals on this show oh, yeah. for the last two or three weeks. But this week, they're at home laying six and a half against the Houston Texans, who have surprised most of the league. C.J. Stroud now has 14 touchdowns to only one interception. It feels like the Bengals are coming off a massive game against the Bills. Obviously, it was a win, and they looked really good. But six and a half against this feisty Houston team, do you think there is any value in at least considering the Texans here? Yes, in a big way. I like the Texans a lot. This was Texans plus eight yesterday, and I put a little sprinkle mm -hmm. on Houston there, and I'm not one who vets early in the week, but I thought, eh, I'll just put a little money on it. And this is a perfect spot where you're getting some value on the Texans because everyone is so hot on the Bengals right now, and they should be. Cincinnati looks fantastic, but one thing we've seen from C.J. Stroud is, man, he is easy the best rookie quarterback out there right now, and he wants the ball. He was great last week in crunch time. He told those guys on his team, give me the football. Let's go win this game. And so if it's close near the end, then I think the Texans can stay in this thing. And also, there's a possibility of a backdoor cover here. I know we don't see those as often in the NFL, but especially if you got it at eight and certainly at seven when it's right there on that key number, I like the Texans. Especially if you have a decent passing offense that say they're mm. getting blown out. Maybe you can come from behind and get us that backdoor cover. I considered putting the Texans in a teaser, but I don't know. Like if, if you get them in a teaser, you want them in a key number. So it would have to be a seven point teaser. If you get them at plus 14, I think I'll just play them straight up. You know, the Texans getting seven, you can get that seven over at BetMGM right now. It is six and a half at many other places. So if you do like the Texans, this is probably a game that you need to bet now as opposed to later here are the the wild cards the ones that maybe you throw in there maybe you don't chargers plus seven and a half at home against the lions this is the conversation that we had at the top of the show where maybe we have been sleeping on the chargers three of their four losses this year have come by three points or fewer so maybe they're not as terrible as people expect uh maybe they can keep it close with the lions so jenks of those teams who needs to be kicked out of the teaser from the jump? Do you need me to repeat them? No, I don't. Thinking about it. First two, I'm more. I think the Lions could go on the road and lay the wood because I really like this spot for the Lions. But then again, the Chargers are good enough not to get blown out, right? I, you know what? Maybe. I will say this. I will say that first of all, as I always say, I really like this teaser. But also, I, th I think you're right. There's no way the Jets are blowing out anybody. It's just not going to happen. The Steelers aren't blowing out anybody. They just don't have the offensive firepower to do it. However, your sabotage factor is this, is that when you talk about a Lions team that has Jared Goff at quarterback, Amon Ross St. Brown, Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield, they have a ton of weapons, and they're going up against the worst passing defense in the National Football League on a short week for the Chargers. There is a possibility that the Lions, who were arrested, who didn't play last week, so they've had an extra week to get ready, against a team that will already be a little bit worn out. I really like this spot for the Lions. I think they can cover. might be a square play, but I think that's probably the one team that might upset your teaser. Okay, so Chargers are out. Who's going to be in? I have some candidates waiting in line how about the titans plus seven right. and a half at the bucks the titans getting a point and a half in the normal spread if you bump it up in the teaser they're now getting over a touchdown here on the road at the bucks do we believe in will levis enough off a bye week which i do think is mm -hmm. key for a rookie quarterback to keep it within seven against the bucks yeah I don't know if the Bucks are good enough to blow out anybody right now. So I think that's probably, I like that better just because when you think about the possibility of their, t it, it, is Tampa going to come out? And also Mike Vrabel's a dog whenever he's getting points. So, and I know he's not getting a ton of points here, but yeah, I think with a guy who's already shown a propensity to be, who looks like he has the talent to be a solid NFL quarterback. We'll see if he continues to upgrade or not. But I don't see Tampa blowing out anyone just because they don't have the firepower to do it a lot, at least not with Baker Mayfield. So I like that better.
Oh, we should do a theme teaser. These teams ain't blowing out anybody. They're and not. It's going to be the Packers plus nine at the Steelers. It's going to be the Raiders plus seven and a half at home against the Jets and the Titans plus seven and a half at the Bucks. Should yeah. that be the teaser? The these teams ain't beating anybody by more than seven points teaser. You ain't blowing out anyone. That's the teaser. The you ain't blowing out anyone teaser, right? You're going to be lucky to win by a field goal. You ain't winning by a touchdown. So, yeah, I like that teaser a lot. We have a pretty tight race in the Pac-12 between two Heisman hopefuls. Michael Penix Jr. over at BetMGM is the favorite at plus 150. Bo Nix is plus 200 right behind him. So I think if you think Michael Penix Jr. struggles against this Utah defense, maybe you take Bo Nix there. But I have the sneaking suspicion that this Utah game goes very similar to the game that we saw against mm -hmm. Bo Nix and Oregon. So I think yep. a lot of people see, oh, you know, we have Washington and Utah, two top 15 teams, and this is an eight and a half spread. Why wouldn't you take a look at Utah? I think a lot of it has to do with Utah's offense. If Washington finds a way to light up the scoreboard, I'm not so sure that Utah can keep pace. I agree with you. And I think that's my thing is I got bamboozled earlier in the year and I thought, oh, here comes Oregon taking on that Utah defense in Salt Lake City. But now I'm not quite so sure. I feel like that the under is the way to go here. I don't want to lay eight and a half with the Huskies. It just seems like a big number. I, I I feel like Washington can cover it. We've seen some money coming on Utah. Spread is down from Huskies minus nine and a half. But ultimately, look, even if Washington has success against the Utah defense, and I expect them to, the Utah defense is good enough to at least keep this under the number. So I feel more comfortable saying, yeah, Washington can maybe cover the number, but at the very least, Utah's defense is good enough to stifle the Huskies on a few drives and maybe keep this under 54 and a hook. So the under would be where I'd lean here. Playing unders in college football, it ain't for the week, brother. Oh. Even more so in the NFL, because it feels like there's always more volatile plays in college football. Like you're sitting there saying to yourself, I wanted to trust a college secondary to keep this game under the total as they right. scramble for like, you know, a 69 uh. yard run. But I do think based on the numbers, the under would be the play. I just, that's how I feel betting unders. There is one play that is numbers based only that I feel like people are talking about this, but it still feels like mm -hmm. it's not being talked about enough. CJ Stroud has 14 touchdowns to only one interception. I had to yeah. double check that. I'm like, what? This kid is lighting it up. And we saw it last week. He really padded his stats. Didn't he have like four or five touchdowns through the air? So obviously it was a one game sample size that kind of padded those numbers. But still, do you think there is a chance in hell? Because I'm not even seeing him on the board here. Do you think there is a chance in hell that CJ Stroud could even sniff the MVP this year? No, <laughs> I, he's, I he's going to be all over. But... He's not. I mean, I, here's the thing you make a, I know the point you're trying to make. You're not really saying, Hey, I think this guy can win MVP. I think you're saying, aren't we all sort of blown away that he's been this good? And do we really understand how good he's been? It's one thing to say, you know, CJ Stratus has been great. No, look at the numbers. He's been remarkable. So the Texans aren't good enough to help C.J. Stroud win MVP. But to your point, right now he's 100-1. to 1. To your point, he's going to win Rookie of the Year. No question about mm -hmm. that. And also the fact that he's even in the conversation, the fact that you could even consider him at this point, I think speaks to the season that he's had. Right. And let's go down this road for a second. Because if something's 100-1, mm -hmm. to 1, like, you know, if there's even a chance, if you even want to put a dollar on it, like maybe yeah. it's worth it because right now the Texans are four and four, but they play in a division that I feel like is pretty winnable right now. It's the Jaguars who look like the class of the AFC South, but it's not like the Titans are coming for anybody. It's not like the Colts are coming for anybody. So I still think there is a chance that maybe the Texans win their division. And it's not like it's been like the, the team is good around them. They do have some good pieces, but it's really been CJ Stroud. So like, yeah. I think, you know, a hundred to one, like there's been worse hundred to one bets out there.
Like, I think one of these other guys will win it, but still, just from a value perspective, we had to at least walk down the road. No, I think you're absolutely right about that. It's it's at least worth the conversation. Like, considering right. the value here, it's something worth considering, absolutely.